Are you a professional pillow fighter? Or a nine to five low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring around the star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ms. Judy Gold. So you're both working. You're both working in in the theater. And you you get wicked. Mm-hmm. Jared. Oh, me was the first Broadway show, and then I got I got wicked. I did another show. Uh, called the Pirate Queen, which was an amazing right. experience, but a doomed flop. Right. Uh, I think it's on the wall at Sardi's of like the biggest flops ever. Um, and then I went back to Wicked, uh, and that's when I sat in Wicked for for uh, ten years because I was like, you know, I reached my goals. I, you know, I was in an original musical right. written by Schoenberg and Bublil, these writers that I wrote grew up listening to Les Mis and Miss Saigon. I was like, right. Oh, that's it. That's all I wanted to do. So from then on, I just wanted to work, and Wicked was an amazing home to sort of. To work. So, to work. so I love your your philosophy about being a swing. Can you mm-hmm. explain well, to the listeners what a swing is? And then we have to discuss your fucking positive attitude about it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a, a swing is uh, usually an offstage position of an uh, a member of the show who covers the ensemble. So, uh, you know, because the show needs a full cast to operate. And if somebody gets sick or is out, somebody has to swing into the show and do it. uh, And that's the job of the swing. And on a show like Wicked, there were two offstage swings and one person who was an internal swing. So they were in the show in the large, big group numbers. And then they also um, understudied, you know, most of the men of the ensemble. And that's what I what I did in Wicked when I first joined. I was a internal swing um so i had my own track in the show and i was an understudy for fiero and then covered you know all the singers and dancers it's uh, just fucking unbelievable like i don't think people realize you know the understudies and the swings are the most talented people in the cast uh, like they I, have to fucking at a moment's notice okay you're so and so tonight and you have to know i mean did, so did you ever get to go on Oh yeah. All, I mean, all the, the time in a big show like wicked, it's, it's a rare, it would happen like maybe like five times a year would be like, right. You come in and look at the call board and say full company. And you're like, Whoa, like they would have like balloons and celebrations, right. you know, like emojis. Um, so yeah, I was always on. Um, and, and I enjoyed were you that. on that when you got noticed, like, okay, you're, you're this character tonight. Were uh-huh. you like freaking out? Would you like freak out? Well, there was definitely, I think Steven could always see it. When I would get the phone call, um, if we if it would be a phone call before the show, because it also would happen in the middle of the show, in the right. middle of a number, in the middle of, you know, I would get thrown into different situations. But, you know, the second I would get the call, you know, although I would be staring at you, you could just see the wheels start turning. Okay, right, where, right. Do I, where do I start? Where do I go? I would just start right. going. To the, so, yeah. So, so you know, the, the, I, I wouldn't freak out, but I would certainly just start working. Because you have to be hyper like you then yeah. have to be completely hyper. Do you know Dale Hensley? I don't. Oh, my How God. I know? He, so I was in a, I did Clinton the Musical, and he was, I guess, he was a part, and then he was understudy. And that's all he did was be an under, being an understudy. And he was one of the most intelligent people I've, first of all, ever met. He was so good. I mean, he could go into all these parts at, he made a life of this. And wow. it's, I, it, you know, it's just that, you know, 20 feet from stardom. Like, but it's, right. it, it's, I can't, I don't think people who don't understand theater realize that how hard the people in the back who were dancing and supporting yeah. are like have to be thrown in these situations. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I always love when we would have vocal rehearsals and uh, and I'd be singing my part. I sang the tenor one part and inevitably people would be like, that's what you sing? And I was like, yeah, I'm basically Elphaba, but I'm in the back in the dark. Right. You know, it, it, you know I'm like <laughs> screaming my face right, off. Right, right. 
Stephen Arrivas, Alex Lacamoire, and Stephen Schwartz, these arrangements. Right. It was so fun. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're even though I'm back in the back of the dark in a couch, uh, because those costumes were so big and amazing, we call right. them couches sometimes. But um, but yeah, you know, and that but that's what I loved. I love the work. I don't I have no interest in the no. I know, that's what I, I love about you. Fun. You know, and you we're, said we're, we're yin and yang that way too. <laughs> yeah. And you said um you said that you know, you've been approached, like, would you, you know, like to do what I, I get to do this like that. You're, I, I heard you say like, Oh yeah. I have a plaque right over, right over yeah. here. Well, some of my friend, my friend, Ray, uh, Ray Matsumoto uh, made for me because we were on stage one time and look, he could have punched me when I said this to him. Cause he plays a very physical track on the show called history who, um, is like the main monkey. Um, right but it's really physical. And he was so tired one day, we were on stage about to do the courtyard. And he said, Oh, you know, I, I, something about like, I'm, I can't believe we have to do this. I was like, we don't have to, we get to. Right. And certainly a fatigue. And he was probably like, shut the fuck up. Jack. Right. Right. <laughs> but, but instead he went home and like crafted a project where he emblazoned this on a plaque and gave it to me as a gift. Right. Oh, well you had, that had a major impact on. So just for the listeners, a track is the person's role basically their part yeah, yeah when you're um, not playing one character you're playing seven different characters right. so a train track going through the show and this right. person then i hop to this person then i hop to this right. person so it's your track through the show okay so you're in wicked everything's great every you know in a relationship successful happy you take your final bow on february 4th i think this is 2018 would that be correct um and you have you guys have a house right we do, you know, we we had a we you know embarrassment of riches. I worked hard, but I I, I enjoyed playing hard too. And so we had a, right. a condo in Fire Island. We had a, we had a studio in Fire Island, uh, and then we bought a little cabin in the Poconos. Mm-hmm. And so in the summers we go to Fire Island, in the winters we go to the Poconos. I mean, and I, I said this often, and my friends remember this. I, who I would say who's luckier than us? Who is right. luckier than? Um, and so we were about, you know, Sunday night, we finished two shows. Uh, Steven had the car waiting outside across the street from the stage door. Um, I went out, met him. He hopped in the, the passenger seat. Uh, I hopped in the driver's seat and, uh, away we drove as we did many times off to, uh, you know, 89 miles away to our cabin and about two miles from our exit is, um, where we slipped into a parallel universe. Unbelievable. Now you don't usually you don't talk about what happened. Well, I mean, mostly because I don't remember. Right. Um, I, I I can tell you what people tell me happened. Right. Um, I can tell you what the car looks like. I can tell you what my injuries were. Right. Um, but I I don't have a firsthand account. Um, but you know, it was a single car accident. Right. And, um, it uh, the the car rolled, the right. roof crushed, and um. It, fractured my six cervical vertebrae and that fracture uh damaged my spinal cord at that level um and for a quick spinal cord uh, lesson uh you know it's the way your body talks to your brain right right so all along your spinal cord from from the top of your head to your tailbone different parts of your body innervate into that spinal cord and so when you have an injury a complete injury as mine is um anywhere below that injury point where the spinal cord connects to parts of your body, you just can't talk to those parts of your body. My right. legs work fine. My glutes work fine. My hands are fine, but I just can't talk to them. So I can't- right. You can't them. communicate and tell them what to do. So that, that creates a paralysis and, uh, and you know, tetraplegia or quadriplegic is the technical term, which honestly, you know, these are words that you grow up with a certain image of what it means. Right, to- right, right, right. And so I still have such a hard time saying the word because what I what I learned of that word or knew of that word before this injury is so different than what I know. Right, of. right. You now know now. Now, Stephen, do you remember anything? I remember the basics. I remember, and immediately after we rolled and hit the side, I cried out to him, and he didn't call call me back. And for a few seconds, I feared that he was had passed. On right. And at the time, and the way we had landed, I was kind of laying on top of him. And then he, when he kind of became conscious, he said something, I can't feel my legs. And right. So I tried to get my body off of his body to not put more weight. I had slammed my head at the time as well, which later we realized I had bleeding on the brain, but thank goodness it all dissolved. Right. They, they, they fixed that. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, that's all. It, it's all kind of sketchy. You know what I mean? And I think it's time right. goes even harder. And it's you try just to block it out. right. It, it's like people don't realize you don't fucking know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, but you were already living your life like that, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so this happens, you end up going to, you know, the hospital, whatever. How did the community find out? Like, how did word get around? I mean, it was, I, I don't, I don't know. You know, that's another thing, you know, Stephen made a bunch of phone calls that night that he has no, I don't recall at all doing that. Right. You know, trauma of these things. And, you know, when you're in that, that moment, I remember, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure word got to somehow my stage manager or our company manager um, that, you know, look, I, I was I, never much of a crier, but, you know, every time I talk about any of this, I cry. Um, but I gathered the company and, um, and let them know what happened. Right. And, 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 you know, me being me, I had prepared a statement for them to read to the company. Right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, 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 and that was something that, that was, I could do when I was first injured. I could, I could check in with other people. I couldn't really be in touch with my own pain, but right. I always like, how are you? How are you dealing with this? How are you handling this? Um, and I think that was my sort of knee jerk traumatic response was to, well, let me take care of everyone else. How's everyone else doing? I'm going to be fine. Right. Of course, be fine. of course. Um, and it wasn't until much later that like the, it all started to, crumble on me, you know, where, what was happening. So initially this happens and I'm sure, you know, you have, you know, because it was so sudden, like, oh, I'm not going to be like this. This is not right. Do you, you like, you got to be in denial. You got to be well, like. The, the strange thing is, is that no doctor told me I was, you know, where I learned I was paralyzed is by reading my GoFundMe page. No fucking way. Nobody had sat me down and said, look, this is what happened. Your spinal cord is injured. You're going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life. Or as far as we know medically right now. Right, right. And uh, and to this day, it seems like the strangest thing. You know, I've, I've processed those emotions in therapy, thankfully. But um, but yeah, I read it on my, when I, you know, when I read my GoFundMe page that somebody had set up, I was like, oh, oh, I'm, God. I'm really paralyzed. Huh. So uh, um, do you, did you ever ask them why they never communicated that to you? No, I mean, I, I, I was, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I had no presence of mind, you know, right, in, right. You know, whatever, five days in and you only, you know, I got 60 days in rehab insurance pays for 60 days. Yes. You know, you have 60 days to go from this prior life to this life it, to learn everything you need to know. And then you're right. on, good luck kid. Um, and so, I mean, I didn't have the presence of mind or the interest in being like, now let's unpack why you didn't tell me sooner. Um, right. You no, know, so not Jewish. Cause you know, the Jews would be like, how dare you? How dare you not tell me? I'm laying here. I can't move. And you don't tell me the truth. I have to find out on a goddamn go. Find like, like, you know, that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Steven, during all this, you know, you're dealing with your injuries and what are you aware of during this period of time? Do you know that Jared is paralyzed? Uh, I'm not quite sure I knew either. And I'm not quite right. sure I really wanted to know the extent right. of it. I just saw was him. It, well, it, was that, it was that moment when, because when, 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 you know, when, when we got to the second hospital where I was going to have my surgery, they, they called Stephen from the first hospital and said, look, we misread your scan wrong. You're bleeding on the brain. So they immediately took him to another part of the hospital. And for two days, we were separated. Yeah. And I went into surgery, came out of surgery. And of course, Stephen was getting updates from our friends. Um, and I think it was our Daniel. Friend, our friend Daniel, Daniel actually told me that he Yeah, was. so Daniel called Stephen in the other part of the hospital and had to tell him how the surgery went and tell him that, you know, that I was paralyzed. And at that moment, his blood monitors went crazy and his nurses were like, you need to calm down. You're yeah. going to have a heart attack. It's very dramatic. So that's, that's the moment. Well, of course. I mean, what a fucking shock. And it's also like, you know, here you are, this beautiful dancer and robbed of, you know, the thing you love. It's just fucking not fair. I can't fucking pisses me off. All right. But I'm not entitled to be angry. So yes, okay. you are. You, you can mirror it for me because being okay. angry is not my, my, my I know it's not, I'm but angry. it is. Oh, I'm learning how to be angry. angry. Good. <laughs> you gotta get that's why you're on Tell Me Now. 
This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy to see if you could save when you bundle your home and auto policies. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. So you get this period of time where you're like, okay, I got 60 days to fucking deal with this. Steven's like, I got to get better for Jared. You know, when you first see each other after you know, like you're told on the phone, Steven, right? That Jared is is paralyzed. What was that first, you know, when, when you first saw him after knowing that? Like, what was that? I think we just kind of held, I kind of crawled up next to him and held each other. And we both cried a bit. Yeah. Trying to understand and still process. And and it's always been, anyone that knows us, Jared has always been the rock and the stable one in our relationship. Right. A lot of, of everything, the way I was raised, that I was very sensitive and very, and I honestly began thinking, I don't know if I can handle this. I didn't. And I think that we still struggle with certain issues that mm-hmm. it is difficult for me to try to be the rock and be the, in which I still feel like in a lot of ways, he still is the rock even after everything right. that he's we've gone through, that he is just this solid foundation of our right, but you're also this person who has dealt with trauma. So you are able to like probably process it a lot better than I'm doing the best that I can. Right. It's, it's still very challenging for me. It's yeah. Oh, of course. Of Wait, course. Also, process. And he already had his trauma. So now it's like his cup runneth over. Right. I mean, how, how can a person possibly continue to hold this kind of experience? And so that's, I mean, I'm constantly, you know, in, in, to your point before, we're still ourselves. I mean, I'm right. still rock. I'm still controlling. He's still sensitive. And right. But unfortunately, now we're both challenged in a way that you know. Now I'm emotional and sensitive in a way right. I never right. was. And and I'm relying on him as a rock uh, many times um, where I, I didn't have to before. And and the whole thing of giving and receiving, I have to ask for help, and that is so hard for me. Right. But, you know, I literally I do not live. I do not survive without help now. And right. so we're both, I think, being stretched to the max of like, oh, you thought you knew who you were and you knew all your skills and your yeah, strength. Yeah, here, here you go. Here you go. We're going to stretch. this in the picture. Yeah. So I, I am really interested. This was a question I really wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. Um, you said that, you know, when you heard the word, you know, paraplegic or triplegic or whatever. Quadri- uh, quadriplegic. Um, you envisioned something or you felt something. What would you want people to know that look at someone who is paralyzed, who is in a similar situation than you, and maybe have that image or vision that you had? Yeah. What would you want them to know? Well, first, I, uh, th- th- they're a fucking superhero. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm, I'm learning a lot about this term ableism, which I'm starting right. to wrap my head around and the way people can sort of fetishize people with disabilities as like, oh, yes. you're so inspirational, you're right, so, right. you know, uh, and so, uh, you know, as, as much as possible, you know, you know, they want what everyone else wants, you know, just say hello, ask them how they're doing, right, right. you know, they're in. And I understand that there's a, there's a visual that sort of stops us all. Right, right. Uh, you know, Ali Stroker is- uh, Oh, I was bringing her, her up next. Yes. 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 I, 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 I vividly remember meeting her years ago uh, mm-hmm. before, before my accident and having that same like, oh, and you see the chair. And so what I, what I can say is, is do your best to see the person and not the disability. Right, right. That, and she's like, are, now, are you guys close? Um, we, we, we have, uh, you know, many times, you know, she's always there for me. You know, I'm, I'm, again, it's hard for me to reach out for help. So right. I've only, I've only reached out to her a handful of times. Um, and she's always, you know, like gangbusters, like, what do you need? What can I do? What can I tell you? Um, uh, she's, she's always, always there and she's, you know, on the album that we talked about. Yeah. We'll so, okay. So it's not that long ago. Um, it's gonna, you're going to be going on three years. What would you say is the, you know, I mean, we know what the physical challenges, I mean, we don't, I mean, you know what the physical challenges are. Steven knows what the, you know, physical challenges are. 
but what would you say is the emotional, I mean, I'm, you're not done with your emotional journey, but you, you do seem so, like you said, pro before with your career, like not, I'm not going to get my equity card yet because I don't, you know, like, I feel like you're like that. Oh, very type A, very practical, very, right. you know, how we, and, and, and that, you know, serves me and is a challenge, you know, finding myself in this position that there are lots of things about this that don't make sense are not logical. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you know, my life is process and steps, you know, to, you know, when I, when I go to bed at night, I need, you know, they're very, if I forget something and I'm in bed, you know, the idea of getting back out of bed, uh, right. I, going to, you know, so the, the methodical nature of my mind uh, really does help me, I think in, in this new life of, you know, I can't just be like, Oh, what are we going to, you know, on a whim, do something. I right, have to, right, right. I have to plan what time I'm going to wake up a month in advance because I have to have a health aid there, you know, to help me get out of bed and right. get to the bathroom and shower and get dressed. So that methodical nature that I have, I think really does help me. Right. In handling this life. First of all, do you dream in walking? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I the other day I had a dream where I think I might have been in a chair, but I got out of it. Right. Um, if there's ever a, a wheelchair in my dream, it's like a um it's like a, a something that I'm like, oh, I'm in this chair and now I'm going to get out of the chair. Right. You know, it's just, it's just the old Jared just in a chair um, or there's no chair at all. Yeah. So in my dreams, I'm, I'm without it. And then do you wake up like a oh, fuck? Well, it's, yeah, it is. It is that moment that, uh, you know, my yeah. alarm goes off. I have to, I have to self capitalize oh. and four times a day. I can only sleep for about six to seven hours. Sometimes I can push it till my bladder's like, wake the fuck right. up. Right. And it's that moment where, you know, where the bed goes off and I'm like, and I'm like, Ugh. you know, that's always a moment. And I'm, right. I'm doing my best to, to realize the face I'm making. And even if I don't believe it, like just put a different face on. Right. Maybe, maybe you know, like, of like outside in, like maybe I can just convince you because it's, you know, this is it. This is the rest of my life as far right. as medically until some, you know, brainiac comes up with a solution to this. They better. Um, so it is every day trying to make that choice to to uh, adjust the way you see it, and I, I can tell you I am not there yet, but right, I'm I'm on the path. Now, how did it strengthen or not? Well, I, it seems like it did strengthen your relationship, but how did it or your commitment to one another or? You, you... Oh man, I mean that's 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 a that's a journey we're on, and I can tell you a pandemic doesn't help. Oh, I bet. Um, you know, because everything we love to do together was ripped away the way we, you know, even, you know, we were always snuggling, holding hands, right. So we even walk down the street and hold hands. Cause I have to have my hands in my wheelchair. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, we had found some things pre pandemic, like going to the theater, going out to dinner, you know, these are the things we didn't do much of because we we're always working. Right. Uh, and then the pandemic happened and now we don't even have that. Um, so yeah, you're right. It, it yeah. Is, you know, again, we thought we had a relationship figured out. And then it's like, just kidding. Everything you knew that worked for you and the way you showed love. Mm. Um, so we're constantly trying to find new ways to connect. And and I tell you, this pandemic has been a, a whopper of a thing. Shit show. You're not kidding. I mean, you do know that you will be back on stage, correct? Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, I think there's somewhere inside me I do. Again, I'm a I'm a such a practical person. I will know it when I see it and it happens. So I'm learning how to be a dreamer. And that's some of the one of the big things that Steven's always modeled for me is you don't have to have all the answers to have a dream. Right. Have a vision. For me, I always had to know how know how I was getting there before I could believe in it. Right. Um, so I'm learning how to believe in things, you know, uh, whatever faith, false false evidence appearing real you know, that I don't need evidence to have faith. Right. So do you, fear, um, false evidence appearing real. That's, that's what fear is. Right. And, and so right. I you got, yeah, you have to, you know, I learned that in cognitive behavioral therapy where you're, I had to, you know, I suffer from depression, but it was like, I had to like, okay, that thought is not real. That's you, you know, and it's yeah. just a way of, you know, it's work, but it's how you have to 
survive, you know, what you have to do to survive. Did you lose any friends? Did you get uh, any weirdo shit happen? No, I mean, I, That's I, why I it, love our community. Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. I mean, there are mm-hmm. certainly friends and I, um, that, that I understand are afraid of what this is. I, I remember I had family members that were coming to see me, you know, like uncle or an aunt and, and they admitted, you're like, look, we were really scared. We didn't know what we were walking into, what, right. we, what it would be and how we would feel. Um, and so, uh, I give, I, I give people that space and those allowances. Um, I remember when a close friend of mine had both of her parents pass away back to back and I felt like I wasn't there in the way I should have been. And I, and I apologized so profusely. And she said, look, you don't clock the people that aren't there. That's not a part of what happens. Right. You clock the people that are there. And, and I think that lesson was something that I took into this experience that I, I wasn't, you know, cause people would apologize just still people that I have not seen that I was close with and worked with that are like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's been three years and I haven't seen you yet. And they feel awful. And it's, it's just not about that. Um, but right. some people do, I think they come up against some, like some fear, you know, of right. like, what's this going to be like? I don't, you know, and, and I, and I give them that room, but, but lose friends. No, hell no. Everyone's do you, do you ever feel like you know, there's just such a fine line with feeling seen and then, and feeling invisible. Like, you know what I mean? Because you know, you're not invisible, you know, like, you know, people like, do you get yeah. the feeling like they're all like, Oh, that guy's in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? Like no, no, look, there, this, uh, it, maybe it's cause I was on 43rd and 8th Avenue and right. it's you know, midtowns, you know, very desolate, but my friend lives in a building where um, they have to buzz me into a special door where there's a ramp and I can't open that door. So I, you know, I, I sit there and I wait for them to walk down the street. And there are times even getting into the subway, sometimes I can't, I need help with the gate. And I'll be like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And people will just completely walk by and ignore me. And it's, fuck, not- I fucking hate them. Fuck them. <laughs> Thanks for being angry for me. Thank the you. The fuck is wrong with people? That's an appropriate response, as my therapist would say. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so that's where I notice being invisible. Um, but it's also something I'm struggling with myself. You know, right. I, I spent my life looking in mirrors at ballet class. Yes. You know, every time I would change costumes. And that picture of myself is, is something that was obviously emblazoned in my identity. And now to see myself in a mirror is really hard. I so bet, I'm yeah. on my own journey of, of trying to see myself and accept myself. Um, so, you know, it, it happens with other people. It's happening with me. Um, and Does you know, I, next time somebody ignores me, I'm going to, I'm going to channel my best Judy gold. I'm going to say, Oh, I'll oh, be, you. I wish I'm coming with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steven, do you feel like that too? That people look at you like, Oh, Oh, he's the, he's the boyfriend. I wonder what, you know, like, do you feel that too? That sort of sense of. Um, I do, but like you, I'm always, if I see someone that's sort of ignoring him or not helping him, I get, I get enraged. Yeah, I'm he, so, I'm really so full of the, full of rage right now. If I have to be honest, Judy. It, yeah, no, I it, can't even imagine. So better ways than I am. I, I get so uh, furious and, and upset quite a bit. Yeah, I, I'm working on it, but it, no, don't I just keep it up because that's how I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> but are you, I mean, there's this enragement that this fucking happened. And then there's this arrangement oh. that you have to fucking, I have to fucking deal with this. Like I didn't have enough shit, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, and then there's that, that question. Why, why me? You know, like right. it's, I, I just, yeah, we, we diverge on that. You know, he sometimes believes in this idea of destiny or faith yeah. or, and, and I'm, and I'm very, you know, I'm like shit happens and then you can choose to learn from it or not learn from it. Right. It's not like it was a prerequisite that the shit thing happened for me to learn in life. Right. You know, uh, you know uh, go ahead, make me a vap of a shallow person and let me not experience trauma. I'll sign up for that life. Right. Um, but, but shit happens and you can choose to what you do with it then, you know? Yeah. That, I mean, I feel problem. like, I know this is so vomitosis, but. I feel like you're going to find out why, you know, I do. I, I I think I agree with you. I, I, yes, I I really do. I I feel like there's going to be a, Oh, moment. Like, got it. 
you know, I do, but it's just, it fucking sucks. Fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> I think for me to, to understand like all the trauma that I, I have to believe for myself, maybe it's just Pollyanna, but for me, that there is, we're evolving. And I, and I believe right. that our souls, I honestly believe that your soul is constantly evolving and you go through experiences, which you may not know the reasons why and the lessons that are learned now, but at some point in your life, I really do believe yeah. that. If you have some clarity and, and some enlightenment towards that, I, I have to believe that or otherwise yeah. I'm probably like, fuck the universe. Right, because you, 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 you would yeah. just be me walking around the street like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> This week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone. I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give better help a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists and you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you, do it. Better help is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait and then... It, I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And BetterHelp is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. This album, it's called Thankful. It has some amazing, amazing performers, singers on it. The songs are fucking so incredible, all written by Stephen. It, the message is a, you know, it's a powerful message to be, I mean, like knowing you and knowing that, yes, there is a part of you that is like, fuck, being able to pull this off, especially now during this fucking pandemic. I mean, how did, did, did how was it recorded, the album, first of all? We recorded for, it was a two year process, trying to get okay. everyone together, over 150 musicians in the city, arrangers, musicians, artists, singers. And Lynn and I uh, worked in five different studios, recording studios in New York City, throughout the New York mm -hmm. City. And it was, we would have a lot of start and stops. You know, there were several months we wouldn't be able to do anything or people, right. certain people that were in LA and which they came in and then also dealing with a lot of people's agents and managers. It was a lot of, I learned a lot through this process. It was challenging. Right. I don't know if I want to work that hard again on a project, but it was right. a labor of love and it was worth it. And I'm, so grateful. We're so grateful to all the, the amazing, incredible talent. Yeah, so by the time the pandemic hit, we were we we had everything in the studio, everything was in the can, as they say. So uh from from then on, it was about finishing the mixing and mastering. And yeah. then like everyone, it's like, well, do we release it now? Should, right, should right. we release it now? Right. When's like, the best what, time to release when, it? When, and then I think by the time we got to you know holidays. October, you know, the end of the summer, we're like there's never gonna be a good time, you know. Right. It's you can always find a reason to think, oh, maybe not now. Yeah. And so we just the, the album was ready, and it seemed to line up with Thanksgiving. We're like, great, thankful Thanksgiving. Let's do it. Some of my favorite songs, FYI, I remember. Mm. Beautiful boy, family. Uh, um, can you can you tell everyone some some of the people who've and they volunteered their time for this? Correct. Every time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally everyone. I mean, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm looking at the the, the song list. Um, uh, it's it's you know uh, it's there's a song called "You" that is mm -hmm. from a, a musical that Steve and I uh, 
had started writing years ago. Um, and one of our like, in our imagination, we thought, wouldn't Norbert Leo Butts be great for this role? And the fact that Norbert Leo Butts is singing this song on right. the album, I remember being in the studio and being like, I've imagined his voice on this song and the fact right. that he's sitting in front of us mm. doing it. Really? Um, you know, it, it, again, it almost felt selfish that there were so many uh, things that we had sort of dreamed about with, with you know, because we did collaborate a lot on, on things. Um, I would often be a sounding board for his music. Um, right. you know, even self-taught, doesn't play an instrument, doesn't read music. I'm the opposite. I took all this theory. I write, I arrange. And so, you know, to have that moment, you know, with Norbert singing the song was just so fun. And then, you know, Stephanie Block, there's a song called Surrender. Oh, it's all from that yeah. show that, that we always imagine Stephanie singing the song and, and to have her doing that. Um, I Don't Want to Cry is a song. I remember him, him writing it in a flash of inspiration when we were down in Mexico on vacation and, and thinking, gosh, wouldn't Shoshana Bean sound great on this? Oh, I love her. Yeah. yeah. So, um, there was a lot about this album that was us sort of finding a sense of normalcy. Right. That this was something we did before the accident, and this is something we can do after the accident. Um, you know, so so in that way, it, it almost felt selfish. But obviously, you know, we're we're doing this to get back. So, um, Liz Cowlett, Cheyenne Jackson. I mean, there's just it's it's ridiculous. I know it's a fucking star studded, and the songs are amazing, Steve. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. These are all songs that were in his trunk. Like these are, I mean, he has a trunk full of hundreds of songs, I promise you. And so we would get in touch with an artist. They would say yes. And we would, you know, together brainstorm what song right. would be good for them. Um, and we would give them a choice. Sometimes we wouldn't. Um, and uh, and it was fun to sort of match, you know, performer with song um, as we went along. Do you think you'll be writing a lot? I mean, you have this time. I mean, will you, do you... Hope to write an, a musical that's gonna be made. I mean, I'm still. I mean, one of my biggest dreams is we did start writing a musical together. The song that right. we and Stephanie is from the musical, but it was hard. Uh, I've, I've I've tried to cajole him back into finishing this, and right, and right. The 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 antagonist was kind of based on Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Oh, I fucking hard. hate. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. But in our musical that we started writing over 10 years ago, in the musical, it ended where him within him and handcuffs being taken away. Okay, please. We well, have to have that done. Um, I'm, auditioning. <laughs> I'm auditioning for the cop that fucking. Okay, okay. Oh, so, no, I, <laughs> so, I mean, and, and I love writing with him. I do a lot of stuff on my own, but I we work really well together. But I think that he's still not at that. He's, he's, he's well. a solo act. Um, he's been he's been incredibly prolific during this lockdown. He's recorded a bunch of different things. We did a he did a virtual benefit for uh, uh, Osof and Warnock. That you did your yes. little, 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 little yes, little, I did that. Yes, they won oh, and they won. And I did yes. another one too. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm working on a solo album that comes out, a pop album that comes out this summer called Fuchsia Blue. So I'm working on that. Nice. I'm working on that now. Do you a do couple you, other shows he's working on? I mean, he has couple musicals, eight, yeah. eight, uh, eight things he's currently writing. He's, you know, I think that's part of his his right. safety. survival, yeah. survival, survival. survival. Sure, and that sure. was since he was a little kid in this traumatic household. Was I can escape into my dreams, escape into music, um, and yeah. and that serves him well. And he's incredibly creative. So I mean, again, not that the this accident needed to happen to make him write again. But he had sort of slowed down. His mother had passed. He was just not feeling like he could find his footing. Yeah. And I think this accident has sort of pushed him into like, look, what makes me feel good? Creating, writing. I'm going to do that. When you say it, this accident, like uh, for some reason, I feel like it's not the right word. You know, accident, you know, because I feel, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it is an accident. It shouldn't have happened. But I feel, I don't know. I feel so much comes from you guys that we're you're gonna find a, the light that, you know but it also it's like this fucking pandemic you know i'm sure you guys were like okay all right we're gonna do this this is how we do this this is how we're gonna do that we're gonna do this this is how we have to do it now and then no no we're not doing anything you know it's like <laughs> fucked, fucked up great it's so fun. yeah you know, and, you know i have i you know every day of my life a health aid comes into our home and you know, in the middle of a pandemic, you're like, well, now what the fuck do we do? Right. Like, nobody's getting on a subway. No one's, you know, right. what my original health aide, amazing woman named Angela Garcia go, um, moved in with us because she, she, she was going to come work on it. She was still working weekends for us. And she was like, look, I don't feel comfortable getting the subway. I was like, I get it. 
And then she called back. She goes, well, what if I stayed for a few days? I was like, okay, let's oh, play a book her. here. And she came for a few days and she stayed for three months. Three months. She lived with us. Did three. you guys fight? Did you guys fight? No, her? no, no. We love wow. her. Wow. I think she's, she's, she's amazing. She's, she's an angel. She's literally an angel. She really right. is really helped us in so many ways yeah so yeah the pandemic definitely you know we thought we had some footing you know right then, you're like all right this is never this ending is- it seems to be we may have another year of this mm. Fauci said the fall yeah. Look, I, I'm, I'm on board. i've been getting text messages i think we're both sort of i think just like today or yesterday you know uh we are now eligible for the vaccine so that's on our to-do list our oh ever- that's good yeah. Uh, uh, cause Steven works as a, as a, as a health aide. I'm able to hire him through a Medicaid program called, uh, right. um, consumer directed personal assistance services. Right. Uh, so he is, he, you know, he works in the healthcare industry. I obviously have underlying conditions, so I'm hoping we can get that vaccination soon. Yeah. So, and I'm, so. I'm, I am definitely an essential cunt. So I, <laughs> I need, I need, the, all right. I need the vaccine. All right. So first of all, I want everyone to go, where can they get this album? Uh, so, you know, where, wherever you buy music, uh, this is the hard thing with music now is everyone wants to stream, which makes the artist pennies. So uh, if you can, please purchase it on iTunes, purchase on Amazon Music. Um, we uh, are working on getting physical CDs printed for anyone who wants to dust off their CD player um, or, or that's still the way they listen to music. Uh, you can email thankfulbenefitalbum at gmail.com. And as soon as we have information on how you can purchase a physical CD, um, you'll be signed up and ready to get that information. Right. But download the f- whole fucking thing, assholes. Yeah. Um, you both. But, you know. Um, okay. So I ask my guests two questions uh, at the end of my podcast. Um, number one, we're very pro mental health. So what yeah. do you guys take antidepressants? We always like to know. And or what do you do for your mental health? What do you, how do you keep your, you know? Um, well, I, I take a B12 every day because for some reason, my mother, you know, has gotten her head that B12 helped with nerves and she used to always- It does. Them. Yes, I take so, it too. Oh, so, you know, thanks mom. I take my B12. I see my my therapist every other week, uh, Stephanie mm-hmm. Opens. She's amazing. Um, and, you know, I just have to get out of this apartment. I, I, I don't know, get, right? I have nowhere to go. I have nothing to do. But I get out of this apartment and I'm just, you know, I've, I've got my Metro card and I just go somewhere. Um, the other day I went to go see the new Moynihan train station down at Penn Station. Oh, yeah. How is that? Gorgeous. It, it, it really is. It's breathtaking. And, you know, there's a lot of it that's not up and running like the restaurants and all that. But right. uh, it's beautiful. So I Do mean, you take I, the bus? Uh, you know what? I can't get on the bus. Um, the, the ramp on the bus is is not the most friendly. And, yeah, they're you know, horrible. look, just, just try to get a bus driver to help you. I mean. I don't know what all they deal with in their day, but I can tell you they look at me with such disdain right. um, that they're not getting out of their seat to help. Not so. as much as the people on the bus that are like, fuck, here we go. <laughs> I know, I I'm going to be late, you know. I, I swear that's, I mean, I don't want to take the bus just for that guilt feeling. Um, uh, but the, the subways and thankfully Ubers, you know, there's wheelchairs, yeah. Ubers that are so easy to call, yeah. you know, uh, an arm and a leg, but uh, to pay for, but. Uh, thankfully, you know, so for me, it's just getting out. Like I just got to right. get out, explore, figure out what I can and can't do. And I know what it, it drives Stephen crazy. It's like his little duckling is somewhere out in the world. He just worries. Right. Um, I don't, what about you, Stephen? I, I meditate every morning and mm-hmm. I also do something called Empower Plus. That, that oh is yeah. A, tell, yeah tell I have that. to tell you something, Judy, that, that re- I also suffer severe depression and anxiety and had bouts of mania. And I tried pharmaceutical drugs and they just didn't work for me. And then I had learned through a lot of research through someone that told me about something called Empower Plus that it literally changed my life. I now take it every day and it, it balances me out. And what is it? It's called Empower Plus. And go online. You can see on YouTube. Okay. I'm on people. so many fucking drugs. I can't even. I'm, I'm so you. sick of it. Because I'm so no, this one, yeah. no, this is all natural. And the reason it came about is a, a man, like his wife committed suicide and he had several children with mental, mental health. And they were trying all different pharmaceuticals and having a lot of bad reactions to them. So he got together with the scientists in Canada and they came up with this product. And it literally, it, I, all I can speak for is myself. It literally changed my life and balanced. Okay. And I take four tablets a day and it's all brain. It's all actually essential vitamins for the brain. Mm. And I'm telling you, would you mm. agree? No, yeah. For, for whatever, he has not had any 
of I'm those like, moments, which I became very accustomed to in our relationship. Even through um, all of this, I, I've been the most balanced I've ever been in wow. 30 years. Yeah. I'm checking that out. I'm checking that out. Yeah, I'm I'm that out. It, it's really amazing. Okay. A I'm lot of people, that. they get off the pharmaceuticals because they, they don't have you do both. So uh, there are testimonies of people. There's a couple of actresses in the business that have, that, that have did testimonies about it as well. All right. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, look it up. Um, okay. Last thing that's called Kill Me Now because, you know, I get aggravated at everything. Um, <laughs> What pisses you off more than anything in the entire world? Like makes you fucking crazy. It could be anything that makes you fucking angry. Oh, it's, I mean, it's just the fact that I can't control my environment. Anytime we would go away, we would, you know, get to where we're going and I would have to fuss around the house. Right, and arrange it, yeah. Dust away and see what they'd be like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Um, And the fact that I can't arrange my space by myself there's a dust bunny under our bookcase that I've been staring at for weeks, but I don't right. have the audacity to ask someone to pick it up. Right. Uh, the, these are the, the things that drive me crazy. And what drives uh, me crazy is when we call an Uber, a disability uh, Uber, they don't know how to protect him. And it drives me fucking insane. They don't, have, they don't, know, how to lock they don't know how to lock him in safely. Usually like, they're like, oh, this isn't my car. I don't, I don't know, know how to do stuff. this. I'm like, Can you isn't, f- isn't that your fucking job? Like, that's the thing. If you have one job, learn yeah. how to fucking do it, you fuck. Exactly. Yeah, and I get... Furious, and I'm not always the nicest person when that happens. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm seeing the nice. I'm seeing the real side of Stephen, and I don't. Oh, like honey. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, when, <laughs> when, when we call an Uber, he's immediately like, "Kill me now." It's just, just good. They never. And I see a dust bunny, and I say, "Kill me now." <laughs> well, all right. I gotta say. I was really looking forward to this because you guys are a delight, and you know, I feel like mad that this happened to you but your stories i mean you're gonna help people i mean just fucking being brutally honest about it it's totally gonna help people and look at the fucking album it's awesome how is it doing i'm super proud of it um you know uh it's it's uh our, our producer lynn pinto um is is looking at all those numbers and it's usually like a two-month lag time i think yeah she, between the reporting of 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 numbers and sales so, right but you're getting it, great it, feedback yeah, great feedback. Incredible feedback. And, and, and that's why I'm so grateful for things like this because the album, yes, we want to financially support the actress buying canine campaigns for independence um, and, and, and you know pieces of equipment that I right. still hope to get. Um, but also you know, to be an advocate, to have a platform to say, look, this is what disability is. This, you know, The question you asked, thank you so much for asking those, those questions. And I knew at it, I knew it being an advocate for this sort of thing. Um, but it's one of the opportunities the album- but it, Yeah, gives. but it's also great I mean, you have this perspective of, you know, I'm sure Allie doesn't remember, you know, not being in a wheelchair, you know, or very little memory. And you have this, this experience of, I'm not only, you know, physically fine, I'm like a a dancer, you know, like I'm, and I'm a beautiful specimen who loves, you know, and then, and now you're the same person, but different. You know, it's just, it's so important for people to realize that- when the bug gets pulled out from underneath you. There's, uh, yeah. there's, there's, there's a way, there's a way. Well, you're inspirational. Um, and Steven is fucking awesome with that fucking pebble thing on his head. <laughs> um, we love you so much, Judy. Oh, uh, I adore we you guys. All, let's all go to dinner and have a nice dinner. Can we? <laughs> yes. Oh, you'll love my girlfriend, Elisa. Uh, I, we would love that. We're going to make that happen. Is she, right. is, is, is she the, 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 the rock, the same, the practical? Is she more me or is she more Steven? I'm going to go with she is more you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's a licensed clinical social worker. She now runs her family's real estate. But when I had a very bad clinical depression, she was, I mean, she kept me out of the hospital. Like she was amazing. She's you, like with the planning. I have to it has to be this way, and I'm like, and I'm, and I am so Stephen. Like, okay, whatever. I, okay, it's, yeah. it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I don't need to plan it out, you know. Yeah. So uh, we need that, you know. We, yeah, we, we need that. Me and her, we need someone to be like, look, you don't have all the answers to start on the journey. Just right. go. Right. Well. Mm. Um. Thank you guys. Good luck with everything. We're having dinner. Um. Yes. You're gonna continue writing, and you're gonna cast me. Okay, yep. that's. I think that was. That's, 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 that's everything. Yeah, <laughs> take it out. <laughs>
Thank you so much for listening to part two of Kill Me Now with Jared Bortz and Stephen Skeels. If you like the show, okay, which of course you do because you're still listening, please subscribe, please leave a review, please five stars, please everything great, everything fantastic. Also, as you know, I wrote a book because I mention it every five seconds and you can get it wherever books are sold. It's called Yes, I Can Say That. When they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. And it's really great. In fact, I just went on Amazon to see if there were any new reviews. I'm just going to read a sentence from this review, okay? Five stars, by the way. This person writes, a fascinating and absorbing read that led me to reflect on my own life in a different way and perhaps question some of my personal views and biases. My definition of a good book is one that expands your life view and makes you think. Few laughs never hurt either. Highly recommended. Okay? So go buy my fucking book. Okay? You can get the audio book. You can go to my uh, homepage, judygold.com. There's links there. Please. I need the money. Anyway, I hope everyone is happy that we have a new president. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for all of my upcoming (laughs) non-events. Because there's a pandemic. At Judy Gold, J-E-W-D-Y, G-O-L-D, you know, like Jew, because I'm a Jew, gold. And that's it. I just, I, I please wear a mask. Hopefully this will be over soon. Be well. Please keep laughing. And as we always say, and thank you also for listening, as we always say, so long. <laughs> And uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long.